It's Gabe Kapler with the Giants, and you're listening to Jim on Base. Jim on Base here. We're live in Scottsdale in the manager's office with Gabe Kapler. Gabe, it's good to see you. How's it going uh, today? It's going good, man. Yeah, we have our uh, mental health awareness day, so uh, interesting day for the organization, really important day for the organization to um, help make players comfortable speaking up about their mental health issues. So across camp, um, this is a big, a big initiative and day for us. No, I like the new shirt. I have the original one, so you guys got a new shirt out this year. Yeah. 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 And we do that because, you know, every time we, we break out a new shirt, it gets some good attention and exposure for Mental Health Awareness Day. Cool. Well, behind you, you got uh, the records. And one thing I've always liked about you is you have good music taste. Uh, you travel, you get around. So I think you're an interesting guy. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, who are some of your favorite uh, bands if you had to go off the top? Um, well, I'll start with hip hop because I grew up on it and um, I continue to have a lot of conversations with my sons about hip hop, both old school hip hop that they grew up with in, in the house and then some of the new artists like um, Earl Sweatshirt, by way of example, who I think is brilliant. Kendrick Lamar is maybe not that new, but still I think he's a more modern artist at, uh, lyrically um, as good as it gets. And, and um, so, yeah, Kendrick would be high on my list. Thinking back to my like childhood or more my coming of age years, it's it's Ice Cube, it's um, it's Nas, it's Tupac, it's Biggie, and, like those are the the hip hop artists I grew up on, and then even some of the older artists like Rakim comes to mind, um, and then R and B. I'm a big R and B fan. Frank Ocean is is high on my list, uh, but then like Prince is one of my all time favorite artists i love rock and roll and classical and jazz like i could go on and on talking about music so it's an easy one for me uh best concert you've ever been to and do you see concerts out? are you a concert goer or yeah i mean i i i'm big on venues so if the venue if the venue sucks or the sound sucks i'm not nearly as excited about it so i went to this show in detroit and saw leon bridges who i was really excited to see and um, sound wasn't great, and just wasn't all that interested in it at all. It wasn't it wasn't great. Uh, bon Iver, oh, yeah. one of my favorite artists. Um, we were here in Phoenix. Didn't like the venue. Didn't like the sound. So kind of ruined it for me. Um, I saw Cypress Hill and House of Pain um, in their very very early rowdy days as a teenager. That was an incredible show. I saw Ben Harper um, playing like a steel guitar. That was a an incredible show as well. Um, one that I, I remember uh, like it was yesterday at a bowling alley was um, a stripped down acoustic Godsmack. Oh, wow. That was really, really cool. Um, I've seen some other hip hop acts that are, you know, um, that probably wouldn't recognize that have been fantastic as well. Well, you talk about the venues, so I was actually curious uh, what are some of your favorite music venues? Because I love the Independent in San Francisco. That's probably my favorite. Uh, the Greek Theater in Berkeley. Yeah. Uh, those stand out for me. Yeah, I haven't been to the Greek Theater in Berkeley, but I've heard great things about it. The Hollywood Bowl is an incredible venue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've seen some classical music there. Okay. Amazing. Um, saw Dave Matthews there. That was, a, that was an interesting show. Um, Red Rocks. Yeah, I, I definitely, definitely would would hit that. Um, and then the whiskey in Hollywood. Uh, I was there uh, two weeks ago. Actually. Yeah, yeah. I, it's been a long time since I've been there too. But that's uh, you know iconic. You know, all those rock and roll bands yeah. you know, hit the whiskey. So that was that. That'd be a cool one for me. Yeah, I was at the whiskey, and the photographer said, "See over there is where uh, Morrison peed into the crowd." Yeah, he said, "See that yeah. bar down there? That's where uh, Janis Joplin got her last drink." Yeah, so yeah. it was kind of a cool place, a lot of history. So, yeah. No, yeah. If, you, if you love music and like all of those Sunset Strip venues are huge, but the whiskey is probably number one. Gotcha. Well, you mentioned your sons and music taste, so you've been known in San Francisco as being a cool guy. So, do your kids think you're cool, or how is that dynamic? <laughs> I don't think your kids ever think you're cool. Um, but I don't know. You'd have to you'd have to ask them. What I what I'd say is that you know a big part of our relationship, a uh, big part of our of our conversation is always is always music and based around music. And um, I love that about our relationship. So I don't know if they don't really care if they think I'm cool as long as um, we have good conversations about music. And I had a listen knacking on, and she talked about getting to the park here early, and you guys have some early morning workouts. So, what's a band or maybe some songs like right now that's getting you pumped up? Um, so, 
Pusha T is like my favorite, like get hype kind of music. And it's not always about like the, um, the speed of the beats, but there's sort of like the passion, how he delivers his lyrics is yeah, pretty cool. So he's got a track uh, called Just So You Remember. It's on his most uh, recent record called It's Almost Dry. So that one would be my, my favorite workout song right now. And then I was curious, because you have some tattoos, do you have like a favorite uh, parlor that you go to? Are you still working on it, or are you kind of done right now, tattoo-wise? Are you always adding? Um, the Idle Hand in San Francisco okay. is, is a, a great spot. My man Derek over there does a great job. He did my, my hand tattoo. Um, is, that for your, is that for a relative? Or? My, dad, my dad, yeah. It's uh, a tribute to my dad, and then it you know, uh, has the date of his death in 2020. So Derek is, is awesome. It, I don't have any plans for, for more tattoos, but I'm not opposed to more tattoos. Um, I have a lot of bad old tattoos on my body. So like, uh, Give me an example, just one. <laughs> I mean, I think like my early 20s, I tattooed an old English man up. So um, like at, what, at the time, I was like, oh, I'm so tough. I'm challenging myself and now I think it's kind of silly but I wouldn't remove it because it's just part of who I am and like or I guess a, a, a better said part of who I was and you know I'm not I'm not trying to eliminate that but I I would be down to explore more tattoos yeah um so since we are in Arizona every time I come here it's like a ritual you have to do camelback yeah. so what's your uh best camelback time like best time of day What's your best time? Do you ever time yourself? Like, is oh. it kind of a race, or you just kind of casually do it? Because I saw you in the off season, you did it with Crawford, and I was wondering if you were the pace setter or who was pushing who. Well, that was a hike in Sedona, so it wasn't Camelback. Um, I don't really think I've ever done it for time. I've hiked Camelback a couple of times, but I think my favorite was like a morning sunrise hike. But I don't remember ever like trying to push myself on the speed. I don't think hiking is one of those areas where you want to like move really fast or at least I don't I just want to like walk and relax and chill yeah well one baseball question sure. um so you're obviously with the Giants so you, and you've worked for the Dodgers you also played for the Red Sox mm -hmm. so you've gotten to see kind of an interesting angle on the rivalries mm -hmm. so uh what's that kind of been like it, um reflecting wise so obviously the Red Sox Yankees rivalry was pretty powerful there's you know, those two teams hated each other when we played, which is like 03, 04, 05, 06, that, that time. Um, I think the Giants-Dodgers rivalry is a really good one, and um, Dodgers fans will travel up to San Francisco. San Francisco uh, Giants fans will travel down to L.A., and um, I think it's really good for the sport. I, I think rivalries are really good for the sport. Well, Gabe, it was nice uh, chatting with you, nice getting to know you. Thanks for coming on the show, and uh, look forward to seeing the season and seeing you around. Appreciate yeah. it.